everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at processing the seabird photo inside a Lightroom. Uh, I was up at Bempton Cliffs in Yorkshire taking pictures of gannets, puffins, razorbills, that sort of thing. And so we're going to look at how we actually process these pictures to get the bird to pop in them. Uh, and before I forget, please click the like and subscribe button down below. I'd appreciate it. So let's get started. So I'll talk about camera settings for this in a different video, but the first thing you have to do is select which images you're going to use in post-processing. And generally speaking, when you're up photographing birds, you end up with a lot of pictures. Um, and, and what you need to do is go through in Lightroom and select the ones you want to process. You have to be very careful because you'll look at a picture initially and the picture will look fine from you when you first open it up. But you need to zoom in to the picture to look and make sure that the bird is in focus. So this picture of the gannet flying down below me looks pretty good when I first open it up. But whenever I actually go in and zoom in, he's out of focus. Um, I'm using a really high shutter speed, so I mean I should have froze it but the, the focus didn't get, hit the bird. And I'm using 3D focus on a Nikon camera and uh, it just didn't lock onto them. And so I'm not going to post-process that picture even though that just kills me, that whole series. He was, he was out of focus, but uh, that's okay though. And how you go about, basically the easiest way to go about selecting these is inside a Lightroom you can flag the picture. And you do this by right-clicking on the picture and you can come down and set flag and you can either flag it or reject it or leave it unflagged and once you flag your pictures that you're going to process when you're in grid view and the library you can come up to this top right hand corner where it says filter off and click on it and then you can so you can filter by a variety of things including whether the photograph is flagged or not and so i can click on flagged and it will only show inside of the grid the photos that i have flagged for post-processing easiest quickest way to go about doing this so what we're going to do now is look at this picture that we are going to work with today of this gannet in flight and he is in focus and we're going to come up and we're going to open them up in development. And so what we want to do is make the bird pop in the picture so that he stands out. And I mean, he does stand out already because he's the only thing in the picture. So he's definitely the focus of the picture. But we're going to, to work and uh, make him a, a little pop a little bit more. Now, what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to drop the highlights down a little bit and bring up the shadows, not too much. We're going to bring up the whites. Now, you, you need to be careful. And so up here on the top, we can turn these clipping warnings on. And we want to make sure that we don't clip any of the highlights or the shadows out of our pictures unless we intend to. So you can see I've turned on the clipping for highlights. And if I drag the whites way up, everything that is clipped is now in red. And what clipping means is in, in highlights, I have nothing but pure white. There is no detail in this section of the picture. It's just pure white. And if I drop down the, the blacks, well, now out here on his wings, there are no details on those wings. It's just pure black. And I really don't want that. I want that to be, uh, I want to have detail inside of there. So I'm going to bring these up and just to where they're not clipping. And really what I like to do is bring them up a little bit past that. And the reason being is whenever I adjust clarity and contrast, it's going to drop some of these black the shadows down. And I don't want them to clip then. Or, and they're probably still going to clip, but I try to tr prevent that. And I'll bring those up just a hair initially. So I would like to apply some clarity, but I only want to apply clarity to the bird. I don't want to apply clarity to the water. So I'm going to use a radial filter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this radial filter across the bird and stretch it out. I kind of want to get it to the wings. So I'm going to stretch it out and then shift it off a little bit so I can get it over the, the bird. 
And then what we're going to need to do is right now it's, it's set for exposure. I'm going to just come back in and flip this over to, to clarity. And then I can scroll down and I'm going to have to go all the way down. And with radial filters, radial filters always apply to the outside initially. I'm going to invert it so it only applies inside of the circle. And now I really don't want to apply it to the water. So I think what I'm going to try to do is use a, a I was going to think about a luminance filter, but the luminance filter won't work because there's black on the wing tips. So I'm going to use a color filter and just come across with the eyedropper. So you, you shift this to color, you grab the eyedropper and you can either click spots or you can drag and I only want to impact the bird so I'm looking at the white um, and so I've, I've got my color dropper I'm just going to uh, come over here and I could click on things but if I drag across it'll select a range of colors now I could use it up here on the uh, the eye and everything I'm gonna handle the eye a little differently but I've got my my section selected. I'll come down here and grab this just to make sure I'm good. And then I'll run across his back here, being careful not to get any of the ocean inside of this uh, and this eyedropper thing. I don't want to apply sharpness really to the ocean. If I applied anything, it would. Uh, yeah, there we go. So now what I do is I, I've got this. It's only going to apply to the, the uh, colors on the bird. <clears throat> I can increase. So normally I don't like to, and you, you want to zoom in on this and you can see there's some grain and I'll take care of the grain here in a little bit. But because uh, this was shot, I think at a thousand ISO and it's not too bad with an Nikon 750. It doesn't have a lot of uh, grain uh, even at a thousand ISO, but here, I want to increase the, the texture a little bit because the texture will get down into some of the feathers. I don't, I don't really like the affected texture a lot of times. On, on birds, it does okay. Just a little bit, though, or it kind of starts to look a little crunchy, which I don't really like. So, and uh, I think I'm, I'm pretty much done. I've increased the clarity and the texture on the bird to kind of bring out some of the feathers. Now what I want to do is I'm going to come in here and basically increase the exposure around the eye. Now we talked about the clipping. I've got some clipping through here on his pupil. Um, I can move it off, but I'm okay with having a little clipping on here. I mean, his pupil is black and I want to have some pure black and it's okay to have a little clipping, but I don't want a lot. I like to have detail in the picture. So. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a radial filter and I'm just going to drag it over his eye. Now and as we see we got clipping stuff just went off everywhere. That's because remember that the radial filter is applying outside and it's set to exposure on mine on default. But uh, we're going to basically not use, but we're just going to increase the uh, contrast on his eye here and bring up the exposure a little bit and I need to go down and flip this so we're inverted so it's actually going to be applied inside of the radial filter. So we just come down, we click invert. We'll come back up to the top and so I'm going to apply a little exposure. I've got contrast on his eye now. I just want I don't want to bring it up too far. I just want to make it so that it's very clear in the picture and stands out. So I just need a little of exposure, a little bit of contrast, probably yep, a little bit of clarity. And now see if you crank the clarity all the way up, it, it does really crazy things and you'll get halos. And so you want to watch that. That's why you're zoomed in at 100% or 200% on this is to, to make sure we're not doing that. Now I want to increase the saturation on this, but I don't want to increase the saturation to the point where his gray eye is turning really blue. Now we talked about the, the clipping up here. Now the clipping, if you look up here under your histogram, you have these two arrows or triangles up here. 
uh, if you basically turn these on and off you it'll turn that clipping mask on and off as well so if you find that irritating you can flip those triangles off and they'll go away or you can turn them back on and so you can make sure that you're tracking the clipping as you're working now the eye looks I mean it's it's standing out now now you gotta be really careful when you're focusing when you're shooting birds and it's hard in flight because you gotta get their eye and their head in focus now if this wingtip out here was slightly out of focus and his head was in focus that's not a bad picture but if his head's out of focus then you're gonna have problems so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the Vibrant slider and what the Vibrant slider does is it's going to basically bring up the muted colors. And so we've increased a little bit in the grays and the blues and the reds on the, or the orange on his head. I'm going to increase the overall clarity of the picture a little bit and the contrast just a little bit. Not, not going to overdo this. So now let's look at the before and after. So this is where we start it on the left, the before and the right. We can see the bird is actually looking a, a lot more better. We've got them to pop. We got a little bit more three-dimensional look. It's not quite as flat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to increase the dehaze. And what the dehaze is going to do, I don't want to overdo this, but I want to darken that water just a little bit more and the dehaze filter will do this. And I always recommend on your landscapes or whatever, always come in and play with the dehaze slider a little bit because sometimes it actually, even if we don't have any haze in the picture, it will benefit the picture a little bit uh, if you apply a little bit of dehaze or maybe a little less dehaze, so depending on the scenario. But in this case we want a little dehaze to drop that water down. And now I'm going to come down here and so I'm, I'm, I want to bring his uh, this orangey brown area in his head out a little bit more. I'm going to increase the yellow a little bit and then a little bit of the orange. You can see that what it's doing. I don't want to overdo it. And right now I've got it on luminance. And I really don't want to increase the luminance. I want to increase the saturation. And you can see I don't want to make it lighter or darker. I just want to increase the saturation just a hair. And so I'm going to bring this yellow up until I like it and the orange up just a hair bit there. Yep, and that looks good. So I bring these colors out in his head just a little bit more. Okay, so now what I've got, let's look at the before and after. So we've got, I mean, we're much more have much more dimension in this picture than we did in the other. The other picture's kind of flat where we started at. So now I've got this vignetting going along on the side. And I should have done this at the very beginning. And this is usually the first thing I do. And I just, I didn't do it this time. But you need to come down and inside of Lightroom, there is a lens. Um, you know, it basically can identify the type of lens that you have. And so we're going to go down and remove any chromatic aberration and then enable the profile collection. So it has a profile for the lens. In this case, it's the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter. And it will take care of that vignetting for me and any type of distortion or any of that kind of thing. So that's a really useful tool that you should use. And usually I use that right from the get go. So. So now let's just look in. We got the, the head's looking really good. The eye is looking really good. But now we have still some noise in the picture. So Lightroom's noise removal tool is incredible. So having done photography for a lot of years now, the, the new Lightroom with its noise removal now. So as I'm dragging it across, you don't see anything. And all of a sudden, the noise goes away. Well, the, if you look down at the bottom right hand side, there was a, you can see there's that processing thing. So we've cranked the noise down and so we've, we've got it looking really good from where we started. So, yeah, so you can see the old before. It was very flat in the end picture over here on the right. The bird is really popping. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please click like below. And if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Uh, and everybody have a good day and I'll see you next time. Thanks.